examples from royals, there's also the E haplogroup. There are Arabs who belong to the EM2 haplogroup specifically. That is the haplogroup identified with the Bantu expansion of Sub-Saharan Africa. So originally when some Arabs discovered that they were from e EM2, but they weren't black looking, they were confused. They thought, oh, maybe my ancestor was originally enslaved from Africa and that's where my haplogroup comes from. But some of these people started working online, uh, c combining their ancestries, mainly on FamilyTreeDNA.com, and discovered that these guys shared ancestry with other people at least 2,000 years old that was in the Arabian Peninsula. So 2,000 years ago, you know, the e haplogroup somehow has been in the Arabian Peninsula. So the e haplogroup has been in the Arabian Peninsula for a very long time. In fact, there began to be a theory that the e haplogroup arrived in the Arabian Peninsula even before the j haplogroup returned, I'll talk about this later, from around Albania. But anyway, the point is, there's an ancient e haplogroup among the Arabs. And these people share absolutely no genetic uh, similarities except for that haplogroup with Africans. So for example, if they go on 23andMe, it'll say 0.0% African DNA, but they'll belong to E. So this is a very ancient haplogroup among the Arabs. There's also R, which again, exists in many people as well. There's T, which for example, from my tribe, there are people that belong to E, T, and J. We used to think my tribe, we were all descendants of one person, not true. So anyway, I hope this was interesting for you guys. What I really wanted to show you is that the Arabs and this will be interesting mainly to Arabic people, but even to other people, the Arabs have many lines of descent. Their oral tradition was most likely incorrect, even though it may have been based of something correct, but it doesn't accurately describe the tribes currently. And what combines the Arab people in general, other than the Arabians living in the Arabian Peninsula, is them speaking the Arabic language and having the Arabic culture. The Prophet Muhammad, for example, used to say, paraphrase, that what defines an Arab is the Arabic language. If you speak the Arabic language, you're an Arab, and in reality, it turned out that is the case. Anyway guys, I hope this was interesting for you and I hope to see you again soon.